Welcome to this soul-lifting broadcast which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness come on right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. The abundance blueprint. The abundance blueprint. Uh, over the weekend, I was meditating on the Word of God just outside of my message and, uh, you know, I just, I've just come to appreciate Psalm 23 a lot more, and I wish many more believers would take our time to get into the realm of Psalm 23. You know, there's a way you can read a psalm, and you can't put yourself into uh, the shoes of the, the writer of the psalm. And most of the psalms are songs, so the singer or the writer of the song, if I can put it that way, and Psalm 23 happens to be the psalm of David. And, you know, how, what kind of meditation, how does a believer position in our walk with God to the point that you can know God for yourself and the Holy Spirit can inspire you to say certain things about God based on your personal revelation of God that can become a generic revelation that every believer will be able to identify with. When we talk about the abundance blueprint, one person that got it very well in the scripture are going to be David, the psalmist, the king and the warrior, the shepherd boy who became the king of Israel. And in Psalm 23, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That came from experiential knowledge and revelation knowledge. If you have been where David had been, then you understand that there's a lot that God wants to do in you and in me. There's a lot that God has positioned us for, and it's until we actually open up for revelation knowledge. And that's why we're teaching the abundance blueprint this season. Uh, in many parts of the world, the things are down, you know, there's inflation and all that, there's scarcity of all sorts. But when you get the revelation of God as Jairi, as the God who is the God of provision, as El Shaddai, the one who is more than enough, the big-breasted one, the nourisher of the universe, the one who can meet each and every one of us at the very point of our need, then you will not allow fear to come into your heart. You will not allow fear to come into your heart. As we continue in this series this morning, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the subject of becoming a money magnet. Let's get down to the real deal. Uh, money answers all things. And uh, when money is available, there's a lot more you can do for yourself, you can do for your family, and you can do for the kingdom of God. Recognizing wealth creating opportunities, or wealth, wealth creation opportunities. You know, there's a point that one can be that you will not be able to see opportunities. Opportunities will not be able to see you just because of your state of mind, whether spiritually, emotionally, or psychologically. There's another point that a believer can be or anyone can be that it's easy to spot opportunities. It's, you're not struggling to meet your needs. You're not struggling to be a blessing to other people that you should bless. That's what we're speaking to today. And in Psalm 23, that I started from when you read verse 5 and 6, David out of revelation, uh, uh, said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. And it speaks to abundance. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. And verse 6 says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Part of goodness is, is to, to be able to have your needs met. Am I saying the truth this morning? Yeah. Part of goodness is that you're not, you know, scratching and scraping for your needs to be met. Say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That means God's original intention is for certain things to follow us. One of such things should be opportunities. One of such things to be well creating opportunities uh, should be uh, uh, that abundance will follow me and you. And you have to get it by revelation knowledge. Because that's the will of God for me. Until the will of God for me becomes my personal revelation, I cannot actualize that will of God. I will say it together. Yeah. I said, until the will of God for me becomes my personal revelation, I may not be able to actualize that will of God. I'll be struggling with it. I'll be struggling with it. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray after this manner, Our Father who art in heaven, I love you, thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
That means your will be done in my life, in my heart, as it is in heaven. When the will of God becomes my personal revelation, things happen like this. But when I'm struggling with the will of God, I'm in, a, I'm, 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 I'm in conflict. You know, some kind of destiny conflict where there's, there's all kinds of pulling and shoving and then destiny slowed down. For somebody this season, I want you to believe that the will of God for you is that you live in abundance. You may not know how it's going to happen, but the most important thing is that you accept it first. And then God starts to open your eyes because you have accepted it as his, as his will. You can imagine what happened to David uh, while he went through all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Especially the, the, the one of Saul trying to hold him back from the fulfillment of his destiny as king after Samuel had anointed him. I, I don't want to change my message, but uh, <laughs> I, I just need to say the things I'm saying this morning. David, if not for personal revelation, a personal revelation of what God has spoken to him, could have given up the throne, the greatest opportunity of his life to lead Israel. Many people today chicken out so easily because of lack of personal revelation, we leave some of the greatest opportunities for destiny fulfillment that God has prepared for us in the face of affliction because of lack of revelation. Because when you have a soul, a principal spirit, when you have an authority figure on your neck and saying this is not going to be, it's easy for you to pull back. It's easy for you to say no, uh, uh, it, it's not that serious, or I cannot come and kill myself, like we say in this part of the world, or all those kind of things, and then you chicken out, you step back, you retreat, and you live short of God's will and God's purpose for your life. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't want to live like that, then you have to live a life of revelation. This morning, one revelation that you must accept, that you should accept, is that God made me to attract goodness. I'm supposed to be attracting goodness. So when part of attracting goodness is, supposed to be, is to be able to attract good money. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in being able to attract wealth, attract opportunities to create wealth. Genesis 1, when you read from verse 28 and 29, the Bible says, then God blessed them, talking about the, 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 the man and woman that he created, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the heart, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you, it shall be for food. Apart from seeing this scripture, from the understanding that God made abundant provision for, for, for us as his creation, it's also to see something that God commanded and then uh, um, orchestrated, if I can put it that way, which is be fruitful, multiply, replenish the heart, and subdue it. He commanded fruitfulness, and then he orchestrated fruitfulness. How do I mean? God told the first man and the first woman, I've created trees and all that. He said, trees that bear fruit, whose seed is in it? If I command you to be fruitful, then you must take a, a cue from other things that are being fruitful around you. Simply put, God looked at man and said, I wanted to be fruitful. I wanted to multiply. I wanted to, to, to attract goodness. I wanted to create. I mean, to be able to uh, maximize opportunities. And how is that going to happen? It's going to happen based on the seed that you have. Based on the seed that you have. I want you to follow me very carefully this morning. I'm speaking to the subject of becoming a money magnet, being the kind of person that recognizes wealth creating opportunities. And God said, I created trees. What is it about trees? They multiply easily. How? He said, I put fruit in, uh, on them, and in the fruit, there's seed inside the fruit. So for them to be able to multiply, all they need is to be able to yield the seed that is in the fruit. 
When you approach a tree, what you see is fruit. You partake of the fruit, you are nourished, but the output of that is the seed that is in the fruit. And through that seed, the tree is perpetuated. I mean, it's, it's, it continues to exist. Am I saying the truth? I said, am I saying the truth? When people come around your life, they want to partake of certain fruit. And in the fruit is the seed that will multiply opportunities for you. Did somebody stay with me this morning? I said, are you still here? That's why uh, Jesus said in John 12 and verse 2, tw- John 12 and verse 24, he said, most assuredly I say unto you, unless a kind of wheat fall to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it pro- produces much grain. What is the process of producing much grain or, or multiplying or becoming abundant in nature? It is to let go of my seed. Let go of my seed. What is the, way, the greatest way to create opportunities uh, for increase and for wealth is uh, that there's a seed in me. There's something in me that God wants me to yield. Psalm 126, let me lay another scripture on it. Psalm 126, when you read from verse 5 to 6, it says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping and bearing seed for sowing. Seed for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. Very important. Very important. God's original intention is that you and I will be able to locate what he has put inside us that will create opportunities for us and that will bring us into that life of abundance. So a seed is something you have that you can deploy to create and realize economic value for abundance. You know, there's a way Christianity has been postured that people's mind uh, have been trained to look for money directly. By prophets, uh, by teachers who are teaching an accurate gospel, by a kind of gospel that separates the believer from the, how do I put it, from the responsibility of creation. Where money can come to you directly. Money, according to God's divine ordination, is an exchange for value. So money flows in the direction of value. Anyone that chases money directly, in advantage, plays a thief. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying this morning. The only set of people on earth who don't want to exchange any value for money are arm robbers. They come, show you their gun, and say, bring what you have. There's no value exchange. They just want what you have without any value exchange. There's a way we can also position the gospel or spiritual breakthrough that it looks like you don't have to add any value. Money will just come to you. Is anybody following me this morning? Yeah. And nothing can be further from the truth. That's not God's original intention. If that happens at all, it happens in a time of crisis. When God wants to intervene because you are in a crisis mode, that's not how God lifts people. When God wants to lift anyone, he does something. He opens your eyes to see the seed that you have, and then gives you an opportunity to see where to put your seed. Is somebody say with me this morning? So a seed is something you have that you can deploy to create and realize economic value for abundance. At the same time, space, or where you put your seed, space is the opportunity to engage and deploy your seed in the way that it leads to increased productivity, harvest, and abundance. Am I preaching good this morning? Is somebody still in this house? <laughs> somebody listen to me and follow me carefully this morning. There's a, there's a breakthrough happening in this house today. And that is that some, somebody's mind will lash onto something 
that will open you up for revelation knowledge for the fullness of what God has in mind for you for this season. Yeah. You know, there's a way you can come to church and listen to a message, and all you are doing is looking up, <laughs> up to God. So when somebody asks you on Monday, on Tuesday, or during the week, they say, how are you? They say, we're looking up to God. Meanwhile, sometimes God wants you to look around rather than just looking up. So when we're finished looking up, we're supposed to look around. When we're finished looking up, we're supposed to look within. The last mile of economic breakthrough is not about looking up. It starts with looking up, then we come down to look within and then look around. When I talk about looking up, I'm saying trusting God, then from looking up, we look within because there's something God has put in me that I've not fully explored. And then there are opportunities all around me that God wants me to look at. So this is not just about looking up, we need to look within and then look around. Say amen to somebody. Money flows in the direction of value. Your capacity to create value and scale it will determine what you attract. Every human being is like a living magnet. When revelation knowledge comes to you, it capacitates your magnet to attract more. What you have around you now is what your magnet can attract. Is somebody sitting with me this morning? Uh, and when we pray, when we look up to God, we're trusting him to increase the capacity of our magnet to attract more. And I'm speaking to how that happens today. How that happens. It happens as God starts to open your eyes to see the seed that you have not seen and to see the space, the opportunities where you are supposed to put your seed. Is somebody still here? So opportunities are bound everywhere. One of the lies of the devil, especially for those of us who live in the third world countries, is to tell us there are no opportunities around us. So many people are begging today because they think they are bereft of opportunities. Uh, because they think that they don't have opportunities to break through. Opportunities to do something differently. When you read a book like The Fastest Billion, Stories Behind Africa's Economic Revolution by Charles Robotson, uh, which was forwarded by Dr. Angozi okonjo -Wela. If you read that kind of book, you understand that the third world countries, and especially Africa, is still one of those places that have been classified as a region of fastest billion. Now, you can make billions all over the world, but the speed at which we make it is different from region to region. I will stay together. Why am I saying this? this I'm saying this to open somebody's mind to understand that even people who are not in Christ, just reading trends and all that, understand certain things that God has already told us, but we are struggling with to believe. Africa still has the fastest billion. Yeah, you can move anywhere you want to move in the world. You can, you know, you can jackpot, you can do all those things, but fastest billion here. You can decide to participate, you may not participate, you can go for slower billion, it's okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that there are lots of opportunities here that people are not reckoning with. Lots of opportunities for wealth creation even in the green areas of the world. I don't mean it in the literal sense. I mean it in a, fig in a metaphoric sense. The green areas of the world, where there are so many things that are still green, industries that are yet on top, or industries where we're still scratching the surface. And the devil is a master at creating, how do I put it now? A shield. Sometimes a shield is created based on insecurity. Sometimes a shield is created based on political instability. Sometimes a shield is created based on, you know, corruption that is rife and creating problems. And people keep moving away from the place of opportunity. And these things are real. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to wherever God wants you to be. I'm just saying that you can even be 
somewhere else and still be able to tap from the places where the billions are faster. <laughs> Somebody follow me this morning. Yeah, very important. Let's look at something quickly and then I would, I would tie up my talk this morning. Um, there, there's something that is called the cash flow quadrant. I just want to open somebody up to the space where you may need to play in the cash flow quadrant from Robert Kiyosaki's book, Cash Flow Quadrant, the guy who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad. Do I have that on, on my slide, please? Can you look for it and put it up for me? The cash flow quadrant, okay, looks like we don't have it. I'm wondering how that happened. Okay. Kiyosaki said, okay, you have it, please put it up. That all of us, or most of us, most of us, we start out from being employees as a primary place where we deliver value and we attract money. Some people will decide to be self-employed. That's the second quadrant. Not working for anybody, I want to work for myself. And some people will be business owners, while some people will make money primarily as investors. These are spaces that are available for you and I where we can put our seed and attract wealth, attract opportunities and become a money magnet. Wherever you are positioned right now to magnetize money from, one important thing is that people who do not maximize the quadrants in which they operate are often those who do not recognize or properly deploy their seed. Don't forget we're discussing seed as a primary way by which you and I attract uh, uh, money. So if you're an employee, depending on the level where you are, there are different kinds of employee. <laughs> you know, in a bank, for instance, there are, there are, there are executive management, middle-level management, senior management, depending on where you are. You need to maximize it because you see that it's faithful in little that more is added. But it doesn't stop you from being an employee and an investor because you want to be a money magnet and you want to trust God for where to invest. Yeah. Some people say, I don't want to work for anybody. I want to be self-employed. The only danger with being self-employed is to stay there for too long. And I'll explain what I mean. Because every self-employed person must think of how to become a business owner. So if I'm an electrician, I'm a plumber, or I'm even a consultant pediatrician, and I work for myself, I don't work for any hospital. So they will have to call me all the time. I will have to show up to deliver my service. If I need to go and attend to my child, I can't make money. It's a case of you can't eat your cake and have it. Sometimes, to be an employee is better than to be self-employed. Because when you call in sick as an employee, they will still pay your salary at the end of the month. You're just sick. If you are sick as self-employed, you can't show up to do the work. So you make nothing. So many people are in that space. I'm selling, you know, wig. I'm selling this. I'm selling that. And you come to church and we pray. And you say, hey, big amen to it. Uh, that amen should give you a revelation that will make you transit or maximize. Transit or maximize. Transit or maximize. I will say together. If it's not doing that, your amen is zero. It doesn't work. Yeah. Whenever a prayer is said to you, is it that it helps you to maximize or to transit or to transition? Are, we, are, are you still with me today? Maximize or transition? Yeah. Maximize or transition? And if you're not transitioning fully, then one leg there, one leg here. By revelation knowledge. I will say together. Glory be to Jesus. Is somebody getting something out of this today? Everyone online, you've been blessed. If you have been blessed online, say a big amen. All right. So it's important that we have this at the back of our mind. The difference between a self-employed person and a business owner is what we call system, system, system. I was teaching this at the leadership conference in the course of the week. System. When you put... Uh, uh, you start to put a system in place to get your job done without you being there, that's when you're a business owner. Self-employed is not a, uh, a bad place to be, but it's not a place to be forever. 
except they pay you in billions or hundreds of millions so that you don't have to do more than two projects a year and you are good as a self-employed person. Yeah. If not, you need to think differently. Put the systems in place where other people can do what you are doing and you're paying them and whether you are there or not, the job can be done. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So where are you or where are you playing in this value creation quadrant? Where are you playing right now? Where are you playing? Is there a place that you need to maximize or a place that you need to transition? Or do you need to cross to another quadrant whilst you are still in the quadrant? Many people here listening to me today, you hand well as an employee. The only thing is that you have not maximized the investor quadrant. And for real goodness, in terms of real money to follow you, you need to do something differently there. You need to make money work for you. So if you go back there, employees work for people, self-employed work for themselves, business people have other people working for them, investors make their money work for them. In simple, plain language. That's how it is. Yeah. That's why I said the worst place to be really is Kodan 2. Because <laughs> when, when you are working for yourself, you, you may not have you know, except you learn how to build a business out of it, you make other people work for you. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. As we go into 2022, you need to locate yourself. And as we pray this season, as we cross over into the new year, let all the prayers, revelation knowledge, blessings, find you in a place where you are maximizing your space or you're transitioning in one way or the other. You can't afford to be stagnant when the blessing of God is flowing and the covenant is at work over your life. Glory be to Jesus. Two reasons why people do not attract money, and I will wrap it up today. One is lack of recognition or identification of their seed. Lack of recognition or identification of their seed. Whatever quadrant you find yourself, it's still about the seed that you have to put down. Lack of recognition or identification of their seed. We see this in 2 Kings chapter 4 when you read from verse 2 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 2 to 7. So the Bible says, 2 Kings chapter 4, and verse number 2, so Elijah said to her, this is the woman, uh, the, the, the wife of a prophet, who died and, and uh, was indebted, and uh, um, uh, the, the creditors came to carry her children. And then she went to meet Elijah, the prophet, to, for help. It's like going to God. Elijah there stands for God, as a man of God, to help. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Woman, I know you're broke. Your husband is broke. They want to carry your two sons away. Your husband was hoeing, left you penniless and all that. What shall I do for you? Tell me. He said, what do you have in your house? When I said, when it comes to wealth creation, we don't only look up. We look within and we look around. Elisha has this woman for you to transition from almost zero or not enough to more than enough. You need to look within. What do you have in your house? Say, tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. A lot of the time, many of us, you know, call what we have nothing. 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 I don't know what to do, but I can do this. But what's that? People are breaking through in real estate. So what is it that I'll now say I am, a, you know, I'm a surveyor, or I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm an accountant, or I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm an engineer, when in this, uh, you know, these are the only two sectors where things are happening right now, and I'm not there. That's why I'm like this. No, no, no. All of us are like a, a bag of seed. You cannot be fruitful except you are seedful. Am I saying the truth this morning? Yeah. For you to be fruitful, you have to be seedful. You have to be full of seed. And you have to recognize that you carry seed. And don't underestimate your own seed and the potency of it for the hand of God to come upon it for it to yield abundantly for you and turn you to a money magnet. That's what Elijah, Elijah was telling this woman. He said, your maid servant had nothing in the house. Then he said, go borrow vessels everywhere. From all of your neighbors, empty vessels do not gather just a few. And the Bible says, uh, he said to her, when you have come in, you shall shut the doors behind you and your sons and pour it into 
all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there's not another vessel. So they all ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. How do you move from nothing to more than enough? The template is in 2 Kings chapter 4. There's a template there. Don't underestimate what you have. Look within. Look at your seed. Can you hear me tell your neighbor today, say you carry seed. Say you're an embodiment of seed. So you're a person of value. Praise God. I said, praise God. You carry seed. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 10, the Bible, uh, you know, Paul writing there said, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. And he was talking about God. God is the giver of seed. He supplies seed to the sower. And it's not just about seed of money. Money is just a type of seed. There's so many other seeds that you and I carry. And we must be bold enough this season to look within and see the seed that we carry and be willing to allow God to lead us to the places where we will sow those seeds. Uh, is, the, is the supplier of seed to the sower. If you're a sower, if you're positioned to sow your seed this season, God will, will, will blow your mind, literally speaking. He will blow your mind. So everyone has a seed. God never created a seedless human being. Not one, not one. The problem really is lack of imagination, inspiration, and insight that often prevents people from understanding the potency of the seed they carry. That's the problem, like the widow woman. It's lack of imagination, lack of inspiration, and the insight, the exposure that will make you see the potency of your seed. Can somebody pray this morning? Say, Lord, open my eyes to see my seeds. Oh Lord, open my eyes to see new seeds. Now some of us have seen some seeds that we have. You have been creative. We have seen some things. But you see, this is the picture. Can, can you look at me, everyone? Everyone online, can you look at me? This is the picture. As a human being, fully loaded with seeds, you are like a person with many buttons. The one that's yielding to you now are based on the buttons that you have pressed. You press this one, it has a value proposition. You press this one, that's a value proposition. There are people here with multiple passions. There are people here with multiple exposures, multiple skills. It's the one you press per time that produce for you. What do you have in your house? What is within you? Nothing but a jar of oil. You know, if that woman was well exposed, after selling the oil and making some money, she would press another button. to say, now that we have money, where else can we play? That's how God wants you and I to think. And then it makes our prayer more interesting. Many people are not seeing the hand of God because you are looking up too much. It's time to look within. Yeah. I will look up to the hills from where cometh my help. My help is from above. True looking within. If you won't clap for me, I'll clap for myself this morning. <laughs> because some people got me fixated with my help is from above. So I continue to look above. And people are hammering all around you. <laughs> I just continue to look above. Look within, somebody. Look within. Look within. There's a lot that the Holy Spirit is doing within you. The Bible says it is God that is at work within us. Where? Within us to will and to do of his good pleasure. So you look within. Look within. Look within. There's both things that God wants you to press as you go into a new year. And you need to press it. And make some things happen. God wants to activate certain things in our lives. Glory be to Jesus. So people who do not maximize the quadrant in which they, are, they, they, they operate are often those who do not recognize or properly deploy their seed. Truth is that the devil hates seeds. The devil hates seeds. 
Somebody, you, you, you need to write this down. As simple as it sounds, it's very profound. The devil hates seeds. Sometimes we think that the devil hates us, not only us. He hates our seed as well. And he will do anything to make you hide your seed, to make your seed not make contact with the right place. He will do anything, anything at all, anything at all to make that happen. And you need to understand that God wants us to circumvent him. Examples of seed, I need to, to, to collapse this and close. Examples of seeds. Sometimes God is just demanding from us a seed of obedience, seeds of service, kindness, resourcefulness, our gifts, abilities, and the products that are locked up inside of us. Yeah. Products that are locked up inside of us. Sometimes seed is money. That's why you have to be a generous giver as well. But that's not the trust of this message, so, so that's not myopic. The church has spoken to seed only from the point of view of money for too long. Yeah. Money is just one of the seeds. That is E that scatters and yet increase. And they see that we told more than is necessary and tends to poverty. That's talking about money, giving, being generous towards God and towards man. It's your seed. Gratitude is also a seed. Yeah. Gratitude can be a seed when you refuse to be, you know, to give God, <laughs> to be, you know, to, 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 to show gratitude to God and to man. Doors may be closed against you. So gratitude is also a seed. Psalms 7 and verse 5 to 6. Let the people praise you, Lord. The people praise you, O God. Then the heart will yield our increase, and the Lord our God will bless us. Let me wrap this up today. The second and final reason why people don't attract or magnetize money is lack of recognition of space. Lack of recognition of space. Seed is useless on its own without space. At the same time, space is also useless without seed. <laughs> it's when the seed lands in the right space that the actual value has been released and then you get something back in return. Are you still with me today? Yeah. So it's important that we reckon with that, that the wisdom to recognize space will re reveal how you can operate in more than one value quadrant. This is, you know, a model for multiple streams of income, like I described earlier. The wisdom to recognize your space by time. You know, there's space in investing. There's space in, 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 you know, at the top of the ladder in your profession. There's space in multiple industries where you can deploy your seed. Different space. As we go into 2022, my God will order your steps to the right spaces. Anyone who has been stagnated in a particular space, my God is shifting you to a new space. You know, time will not permit me in Genesis 26. You go and read the old chapter when you get home. In verse 12 of Genesis 26, the Bible says, Isaac sowed in the land, in the land, in the space that God ordered his steps to. In verse 1, it says there was another famine that was different from the famine that happened in the days of Abraham, and Isaac was going to Egypt. And God said, no, don't go. Stay here in Gerar. This is your space, your space. Sometimes your space is a physical location. Some other times your space is an industry. Your space uh, can also be a platform. A platform. We live in a digital age. Many of us have seeds that are supposed to be on digital platform. We are putting them on physical platform. Yeah. And limiting the expression of the grace of God. What is supposed to be on Instagram should not be in the shop. Yeah. What is supposed to be on a virtual market space should not be in a, in, in a store on, on Admiralty Road. Yeah. Because many people, I mean, I pass there all the time, all over. You know, Lucky One is like a, a hub for new businesses. The only thing is that the mortality rate is very high. Yeah. You see a new mall that they just built, and you see all the shops there. Before you know, you come back in 12 months, all of them have gone, another set have replaced them. Yeah. And everybody wants to come into that physical space as if that's the only platform of expression of our seed. We live in a digital age. There are many seeds that you carry right now. God just wants you to find a digital platform. The prophet told the widow, 2 Kings chapter 4, go borrow vessels. May my God open your eyes to the vessels you need to borrow this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone that is borrowing the wrong vessel, my God will redirect your step. In the name of Jesus, 
Your businesses will no longer die. Your seeds will not be planted on the wrong soil. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My time is up. I need to wrap this up. But as you can see, there's, there's so much in my heart concerning this. I'm going to continue from here some other time. But my prayer today is that God will start to shift somebody right from looking within and seeing the seeds that God has positioned inside of you to finding the right kind of space. The right kind of space. Let's close with that slide. Put that slide on, on examples of space. Yeah. I think that would be good before I just shut this down. Uh, yeah. This is not exhaustive, but this is just to, 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 to steer somebody's mind. All kinds of platforms. You know, what about social capital? Of partnership? Of mentoring? You know, and all those things that create space and opportunities for you. How are you maximizing the social capital around you? Within this church, for instance, as we go into next year, we're going to start a, a, you know, a mentoring platform. And all the young people here, listen to me. If you want to fast track destiny, you need to maximize the social capital within the church. That's why the church exists. We only have Ananas and Sapphira who always want to take advantage of the social capital. Yeah. And you don't have to be Ananas and Sapphira. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, I wish I had more time today to deal with some Ananas and Sapphira issues. <laughs> but marketplaces, facilities and assets, there are people who need physical location. One of the grace that we've enjoyed as a church is that God has opened so many physical locations to us. God supplies, he, he, he opens the doors of places to us. And miss our need. And you can't be in a church like this that does not struggle to get space. And then your business will be struggling for space. It has come to an end this season. Yeah. Say it better, amen, somebody. Yeah. Brands and referrals, new territories, franchises. The list is endless. Somebody listen to me right now. God, the, the, the vessel you need to borrow is a franchise. You don't have to start that business from scratch. Look for a franchise. In that area, they are waiting for you. Yeah, bring a franchise into Africa. Bring it into West Africa. You know, just, just step into destiny. And stop giving excuses. Because it's time. Somebody say, say it's time. Say, this is my time. This is my season. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at Elevation NG to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common.